giant sun. Got, oh man. Take it easy. Take it easy. Oh man. Alright, tells you you got a fish on there. Reel him in. What do you got, bud? Come on. Fishy, fish, fish. <laughs> Fish show. So this is a fun one here. I actually took the kids here just the other day. We did really, really awesome. It is the season for the perch to be spawning. I'm in a little backwater creek here in eastern North Carolina coming out of the Noose River. Just had a nice rain and there's a, a bit of a current flow coming. I want to show you what's going on. Really nice. So there's a little bit of a current flow here. And what we have is perch and bluegill. I'm sure largemouth bass, which I'm going to try for number of other fish that are coming up into this canal right here. So this is like a nice little public access in New Bern, North Carolina for small boat crafts like kayaks and things. But it's just a really convenient spot to go fishing with kids. So I brought my little ones here. And we, we were only here for a short time, maybe 45 minutes. We tore them up, got all kinds of really nice perch and uh, big sunfish. A little more on how I am catching these fish. And of course, you're going to get all kinds of excitement from these little ones. They, they are the star of the show, for sure. All right, we're going to take a worm. Ew, wormy worms. Worms yeah. are actually really good bait, turns out. <laughs> Can't catch fish. You going to tell people what we're doing, Jasmine, on that camera? Okay, look at this. Got a high low rig. Really high. I want one way up, suspended up off the bottom. We got one right on the bottom. Ooh. Yep. Thank you. You're gonna catch so you can see they're playing around. It's so important when you have kids to make it fun. Don't force them to fish, just let them have fun. And when the action happens, they're ready. This is one of the secrets why all four of my kids yeah, like fishing. Real, real. It's so high. You're, you're doing a good job. Real, real, real. Jamie, you can help lift this pole up, okay? Okay. Lift the pole up. Like this. Whoa. That's my fish? Yeah, you want to see the fish? Yeah. I just love the excitement him. on my son Tozer's face. He's my youngest. <laughs> He loved this little fish so much. I want to eat fish with cheese. Ooh, do you like eating fish with cheese? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. yum yum. Jabin got a perch. A little one, but it's a perch. Look at the colors of this fish, Jasmine. Look at. I like it. Can we keep him? Wow, look at Can we that. Keep him? Can we kill him? He's a little little one, but. Now see, like I said, when the action happens, everyone shows up. Now you'll see my daughter Jasmine's a daddy's girl. She basically sticks with me most of the time. But when the action happens, they all show up. You're gonna back up. You're too close. Okay, Princess got a perch. Good job, sweetheart. My turn. All right, what you got? Oh man. Take it easy, take it easy. Look, oh man, look at the size of this perch. It's a huge perch. Look at this perch these guys got. Whoa! Wow. Wow, can you guys show me that? Wow, look at the size of that perch. Oh my gosh. Hi, go. Break it. Oh my gosh, it's a giant sunfish, Jasmine. Jasmine has an absolute mammoth sunfish on. Real, Jasmine. Okay. Real them in. I'm going to try to help you. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Are you kidding me? Look at the size okay. of the sunfish. Is that it? Can I? I'm going to get him out. That is about as big as they get. Go ahead and pick him up, Jasmine, first. Okay. Yeah, sunfish do oh get bigger goodness. than I have gotten bigger but for a kid this was just a monster i was so excited for her all right told you you got a fish on there yeah. reel him in what do you got bud 
Come on, man. Real, 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 real. Come on now. Give me a fish. You got it. Why did you get it, Tozer? Again. Oh my goodness. It? It's a bass. Wow, okay. Help Tozer get down. He can get his oh, fish. Oh man, you got another one. That's a big bass. This is a massive fish. I'm a bass. Nice job, buddy. You Tozer, do you, that's an awesome fish. Do you want to hold him? Wow. Nice. That is yeah. cool. What? <laughs> Did he bite you? Did he bite you, buddy? Yeah. As I said, it was literally nonstop action with those kids. What you just saw is just the highlights of what happened. It's not all the fish we caught. I wanted to also show you the step-by-steps on how we caught those fish. So I went back the next day by myself just so I could show you more of how we were catching those fish and I got into them like crazy again, some really big ones. So I'm gonna get into that right now. And after this clip, you're gonna see, I actually took my kids to the river for a little bigger fish. We ended up getting into some nice stripers from the bank. Really fun, and then right after that, we went home and did our catch and cook, catch, clean and cook of these fish. So that's all coming up right now. All right, so that's it. Just like I showed in the intro, worms, that's right, night crawlers. I remember growing up using these, and as you get older and you get better at fishing, it's like, well, we've graduated from night crawlers. We don't use those anymore, and then we use lures and uh, cut fish and live fish. Well, cut these worms in half. I'm using a half of a night crawler. Night crawlers are awesome. I lived in upstate New York for walleye and trout. Night crawlers are awesome. I use a lot of hard baits, a lot of hard lures, but there are times when you just cannot beat the night crawler. It's the same with largemouth bass, crappie, perch, bluegill. Worms are tried and true. They really are one of the most deadly baits there are, and they are killer for this. I, I saw another guy that I respect and like a lot on YouTube fishing here using minnows, and those are a great option but they're harder to get and they're more expensive. I wanna show you that night crawlers work just as good and they're a lot easier to get your hands on and not quite as much money or effort to get. So night crawlers on the bottom, we'll throw it out. And yeah, I'm using my daughter's pink pole. That's right. Thinking is perfect for this, but I'm gonna throw this out. Up in the end of this canal I'm at, it's kind of a pinch point. They can't go anywhere past where I am right now. So they're pretty stacked in here. Last time I came, they're hitting it right away. So chances are we're gonna get bit right away. But they're just kind of coming up to the end of this where there's some some current. They're stacked up in here. They're spawning. They're feeding. It's a great spot. So anywhere you can find like a really a creek that's got a little dam or a ditch can be a really awesome spot especially if it's five to eight foot deep. I find that sunfish real and, and perch this time of year for the spawn, it's a really consistent water depth is at eight to five foot range, which it's about five to six right here right now. Actually, they do move up into shallower water. I remember in upstate New York ice fishing for these fish in like three foot of water, which is exactly what's gonna happen here. I end up finding today the fish were really shallow on like just the day before. That should be money. So just like I did with the kids, just throw it out there, set the rod down, use watch. I think I'll start bouncing like crazy here. Shouldn't take shouldn't take long at all. Other thing I'm going to do while I'm waiting for that, just throwing this little swim bait if there are any largemouth in the spot. It's a really good option for catching big ones. Just got to go nice and slow this time here because the water is still really cold as it's February. It's actually February uh, 6th right now. I don't know if you just saw that, but uh, I was bringing my swim bait in right next to the dock here. Something it wasn't like a huge hit. I'm not sure what it was. It was something definitely was after it and set the hook. The line. I missed the fish and the, the lure somehow came off the hook and went like a mile up and then landed in some bushes behind me. So, yeah. Glad I didn't hook it because I probably would have lost it. it. Was something wrong with my line? Must have had a uh, 
So I toss that worm right where I just missed that fish, and this is oh, what happened. Big perch. Big perch. Really big perch. A giant. Oh my gosh, look at the size. This is an absolute pig. A monster. Check this out, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. That is a stud. Upstate New York, wherever. I mean that that's a that's a huge perch. Seriously. That's a massive perch. So yeah, that's gonna be part of the catch and cook right there. I was right in the air where I had that thud on that swim bait. But again, just night crawlers. These night crawlers are killer. They're killer. You don't need to go all fancy. Just a, a night crawler, some split shots on a little, uh, I mean, this is as basic, or, basic of a rig as you can get. Nothing fancy to it at all. And you can catch these killer perch. It's one of the best eating fish you're gonna get in fresh water here in North America. Walleye and perch and bluegill. Seriously, some of the best eating fish you'll ever get. And so, awesome. Awesome, we'll see if we can go get another one of those. I'll show you exactly what I'm using here. It's got two split shots. I mean, that's as basic as it gets. That's what I used to use as a kid. It's like an old eagle claw worm, worm hook. Only these are cheaper than eagle claw, but uh, typically what I get from them, size six hook with uh, two little split shots above it. I mean, that's it. That's as simple as it gets. Just simple. I've been trying to get a bigger profile on there. See if I can get another bigger perch or even a big, some big large mouth in here. I wouldn't, wouldn't mind hooking into a big large mouth right now. That'd be kind of fun. Bite right now. Yep. Swimming with it. Got him. Nice perch. Oh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. It's clearly not as big as the other one, but this is a, it's a really good, just average good eating size fish, like anywhere. Like whether you're here when I was in upstate New York, getting a mess of these would be, would be gold. This is what people spend their whole weekend freezing on the ice for. I mean, that, that's one of the things I'm, I'm kind of laughing at in my, my heart right now, just to, Sorry to my friends up north that are still up there, but I remember freezing my butt off on a on a bucket on the ice all winter long after these things. And it's uh, 70 degrees here today. It's at probably about 64 right now, so it's getting into evening. But I know it's cold in upstate New York, but here in eastern North Carolina, the weather is really nice, and uh, I got some good perch here. Hole right here, and then it's about seven, maybe eight foot over here where I was getting them the other day. That bigger one I caught. I think it's only about three foot. This last one I caught is only about two foot deep. So they're way in shallow where this current is. Um, must be the water that's coming through this creek and that we've got much, a much warmer day today. The last few days have been a little warmer, so. Oh, there he, there he is. Okay, he's got it. A little one. Either side. Yes yep, <laughs> it is. Oh man. Yeah, I think you gotta get right on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they they have pretty good eat too. Oh, they're excellent. Mm -hmm. There he is. Go. Yep, there he is. He's got it. Got him. That's a big one there. Yep. You got it, man. Real good one. Oh, man. Oh, you tough. You got in a bed up, man. Oh, yeah. All right. Check that out. Another real nice one. Look at the colors on this one. Just really, really pretty. Okay. I mean, it's the closest thing you're going to get to colors of a peacock bass, really. I mean, they are a very, very colorful fish. I hope that helped give them a better idea of how we were catching those fish. The very next day, my kids came over. I took them to the river. We got onto some awesome striper bass action. And then we went home and we cooked up those fish. So you're gonna get the whole catch, clean, and cook right after you see these awesome striped bass catches. Take your time, Jasmine, nice and easy. She got a nice striped bass on. 
Good job, sweetheart. Nice and easy. Take your time. Don't reel, don't reel, don't reel. Okay, reel, reel, reel. Reel, reel, reel. Elliot, come here, hurry up. Elliot, come here, please. Okay, so don't, don't reel, don't reel, don't reel. Don't reel. Nice. <laughs> it's big. What if the seagull takes it away? Set the fish and pull down, okay? Okay. What if the seagull takes it away? Hold it just like that, the okay? The seagull won't take it away. He won't. Awesome. Fish, Jasmine, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, my boy's on. Nice one, bud. GoPro? Yep. <laughs> GoPro, start recording. Just aim it at him. Hudson, take your time. Put that rod up high and don't pull too hard. GoPro, start recording. There you go. Just hold it on him, okay? Good job, Hudson. Bring him over to me and I'll lip him. Elliot, come here, bud. Come here. Hudson, yours is probably bigger. Take your time. Elliot, come here. Hold this just like that, okay? Hold it. Just like that. Okay? Keep it on him, okay? Hold on, Hudson. Take your time. That's a bigger one. That's definitely a bigger one. Yeah, that's a bigger one. Come over closer, Hudson. Elliot, Elliot, look at, look at that. It's the biggest bass I caught. Watson, you want to let him go? Okay. Here, Elliot. Okay. Good job, Elliot. Awesome job, buddy. Give me a slime five. Oh, yeah. Nice. So those stripers were actually using a little four inch silver husky jerk. That seemed to be the awesome ticket. And it was hot. We were actually just walking around, checking things out for something to do for a little bit from that comb. And while we were walking around, those birds like diving down the water, all of a sudden I saw blow ups from the stripers. I was like, hey, we got our rods in the car. So we ran over, grabbed a rod. Instantly we were hooked up. Jasmine was on that fish. It didn't take long for Hudson was on, lost a few. And then, uh, you know, there's a lot of stumps in that area. And unfortunately we lost the one lure we had that was working. But hey, that was fun. It was a real quick, fun trip. We came home, we started cleaning up those perch and we did our catch and cook. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Hope you enjoy this, hope you learned something from it. It was a mixed bag of reaction from the kids, you'll see. I thought it was really good. Half my kids loved it and I had to tweak things a little bit for everyone to like it. And that's kind of how cooking can be. I'm a bit of a foodie, I really like my food, but I have some real critics with my four kids, quite a diversity and interest of what they actually like and don't like. So this might be helpful for you if you have picky kids as well. All right, so we got this big pile of fish the kiddos caught. We're gonna go ahead and flay this. I wanna just say real quick, these bluegill right here are one of the tastiest eating fish in freshwater. Walleye, perch, crappie, and these bluegill are sun crackers or brim, they have a lot of different cons. These are one of the tastiest eating fish in freshwater. Real quick, we're gonna flay these things. Behind the back of the head, aiming down and towards the head. Gonna make my out outline on this fish real quick. Just like that. Flip it over. Do it again. Real slimy. Sometimes I like to take a paper towel to them, get the slime coat off first. Yeah, just go. I like to make my outline on both sides of the fish before I commit to a full fillet. I find that in the, in the end, I end up with a better fillet with more meat doing it this way. Now, if you've never filleted a fish before, you watch what I'm doing. I'm just kind of cutting right along that top fin along the bone line and just uh, removing that meat from that side of the bone line right to the rib cage. Then I pull up and cut right down to the tail. I will do full length videos step by step on how to do this in the very near future. Okay, so we're gonna, now we got that filet off from that fish. We got the skin on one side. How do we get that fillet, that skin off? Make sure you aim it right here. We're gonna take the knife, angle it down towards that skin and kind of just run it right on that skin. That's gonna take that meat right off. It's like that, nice. So right all that meat off from that skin. I'm gonna do it again on this side. 
one nice sharp knife. I always sharpen my knives before I fillet any fish or game. So we get nice sharp fillets, or nice clean fillets. Look at that, it's gonna be so good. This is one of the best eating fish in freshwater. Crappie, walleye, and perch. I could make this more complex. There's other videos you could watch online that are more complex, and I might do that someday. But what I really wanna do is I have four kids and sometimes life is busy. I'm gonna make this kind of unique and really, really good, but I wanna make it in a way that's fast and easy so you don't have to spend a ton of time doing prep and cooking this. This is gonna be a fast, easy recipe. What I'm gonna do first is if you take a look at this fish right here, we're just gonna season this fish right off the bat. It's just some uh, lime-flavored Mexican-style seasoning I got when I put on the fish. Like this. And then, and some garlic powder. We're gonna do this to both sides of this fish. And then, we're just gonna, you could do two things. You could grill this on the on the barbecue grill, which would be the best, that would be really good, especially over charcoal. Or we're gonna put it, do it in a cast iron pan. But that's what we're gonna do this time, is put it in a cast iron pan. All right, we got our fish here. We have the, the pan pretty hot. I just got it smoking right now. So we're gonna put it in the pot right now. In a cast iron skillet. We're basically just gonna blacken this. See, I got all my little ones here right now. I got my my big boy right here with me. Come here, bud. He's helping me out. Are you helping me out? Does that look good to you, Tozer? Yeah, it looks good to him. So he's helping me out. So we're just gonna cook this up. It's gonna be a couple minutes on each side, just basically until it's flakeable. All right, so we're gonna flip our fish. We're gonna make sure nothing gets burned. We want it to be blackened like that, that's good. But we don't want it to burn. So we're just gonna give it a flip, reduce the heat down a little bit. Just gonna kinda let that Cook until it's all cooked all the way through and real flaky. All right, our fish has is, is, uh, gotten to the point where it's flaky. You just want to see see how easy that flakes like that? So now we know it's ready to get it out. What I want to show you here is when you get your fish all done, to kind of flake it up. You don't want it to be in like too small pieces, but you do want this to kind of be mashed up and into some flaky things, about like that. I'm gonna try just a piece for the flavor. Mmm, I think my cameraman buddy, or my cooking partner here wants to try some. You wanna try some, buddy? Yeah. That yummy? Mm -hmm. right. All right, so now we're gonna make our slaw. I messed up on the beginning as my five-year-old was doing the videoing and I didn't realize the battery was so low. And when it happens, the, the video quality is just terrible. It speeds up, it does all kinds of crazy stuff. But anyway, all I did is took a quarter piece of cabbage, cut it into really thin pieces. If you have a purple cabbage to go with your normal cabbage, same thing, cut it into really thin pieces like you would for a salad. That's all there is to it. All right, we got our fish done. The slaw is ready. I got some black beans we're gonna add to the slaw like that. And, again, this is the quick way to do it. We've got some jalapeno peppers, already diced up in a can for a little bit of flavor and spice. Well, with these, with anything, wanna drain the juices. Then a little bit in there, and then we'll put Now cilantro. 
This is gonna give a lot of flavor, the cilantro, a lot of fresh, fresh flavor to this. Put that in there, get some of these stems in there, dice them real, real thin. All right, I got my little taco shells. We have uh, corn tortillas and the regular soft tortillas. In the oven, that I just set it at 300 degrees. They've been in there about 10 minutes. I turned it off and uh, they're all nice and warm. I'm just gonna hurry up and make some real quick. Let me show you how I do this. All right, we got the whole gang here. Got all my kiddos here eager to eat this yummy ta fish tacos. Got Hudson on the camera, my oldest. So what we're gonna do real quick is build one of these things. We're gonna take some of these the pieces of fish here, flake it onto the taco just a little bit. And again, you can make your own sauce. This is a quick, easy way to do it. It's a Taco Bell blah, blah, sauce. There's all kinds of different cilantro sauces and things that you can you can get. Spicy mayo. But when you're in a, in a pinch and you just need to cook something quick and you don't have time to get too fancy, just get some store-made taco sauce like that. And then we're gonna take our slaw right over the top, like that, and that is it. That is one taco down. I'm gonna do this again so you can see, gonna grab some of that fresh. And put it down on a taco like that. Make sure you got no bones in it. Some more sauce on it. Just like that. Some more slaw on there. Just like that. Oh man, that looks really good. We're gonna do up a whole bunch of these and we're gonna start eating these right away and see what the what the judges think. All right, guys, let's, let's pray real quick. Lord God, I thank you for your goodness and for your grace. I pray you bless this food and help us to show your love to others. We thank you for all the good things you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we got the food ready. and The judges are about to tell us what they think. Okay, everybody, why don't you give it a try? Pick it up <laughs> and give it a big old bite. Or two, give it a couple bites if you need to figure out what the flavor is about. It's good, it's good. Is it good? What do you think of that? Oh, it's spicy. A little spicy? Yeah, there's some a little jalapeno in there. We got a big thumbs down from Elliot. <laughs> a big one. Jasmine likes it, but a little spicy. Okay, so it's a 50-50. Let me see if I can break the tie here and figure out what, what it's all about. I'm gonna give one a shot here. We got the regular tortillas and the corn. This one is a regular one. Hmm. Really fresh and really sweet. I think it's really good and I think I know how to tweak it. Too. I'm proud. The ones here that don't like, let's see what I can do. Okay, I have taken the relish off for these two. It was too spicy for my daughter. And let's see if this is just fish with some sauce on it. What do you think of that? Yeah. Hopefully it's better. Is that a bit better? That one you like, okay. The other one was way too spicy. What? So I'm gonna eat theirs. That jalapeno was too much for my daughter. She's not a big spicy guy, spicy girl, gal. And uh, Elliot, he's, he's more picky. He's harder to please, but when he likes something, he really likes it. And if he doesn't like it, he's going to tell you the way it is. Okay, guys. Let's thank everybody. We want to thank you all for watching this. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something. If you did, um, please consider subscribing and if not, at least give it a like. But anyways, as always, God bless, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys. You guys want to say see you on the next one? See you on the next one. Bye. Fishy, fish, fish, fish. <laughs> fish show. The fishy. Eat that fish because he's a big one. He's a big fish. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. one.
Oh, do you like eating fish with cheese? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yum yum.